About five years ago, I bought the AKG C414 XLS as a voiceover microphone. And in today's video, AKG was kind enough to send over two other microphones in the same line, the 214 and the 314. Now, let me explain how I ended up with this microphone and why I use it for voiceover. I remember hmm, seven years ago or so, my brother, who is a musician, had been recording with a Neumann TLM 103. Uh, really common, about a $1,000 microphone. And his complaint after doing several years of recording with it was that it was too, with the sibilance in his voice, it just wasn't a great match. It ended up that they had to do a ton of DSing on his voice to manage the sibilance, the sizzling sound that you get when you say the letter S or C. And uh, so he did some research, talked to a bunch of his other friends in the recording world, and ended up with the C414 XLS. Now, there's also another version of the C414 called the XL2, and that is voiced a little bit differently. It does have a little bit more presence boost to it, and so that's how I ended up with this one. I do have a lot of sibilance in my voice as well, and so I wanted to manage that, <laughs> and this is a great way to do it. And we'll talk about what the voicing philosophy was by AKG when they developed the XLS, so there's a long history there. Let's talk about these different microphones and let's start with some comparisons on all three microphones with three different voices. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you're quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Next up, a little sample on how all of them really handle plosives. When you say the letters P or B or T, there's a little puff of air that typically comes out of your mouth, and if that gets directed directly into the capsule, and you'll notice I have this off to a, an angle here so that we don't have that issue, but normally if you did, Peter Piper picked a peck of purple pickled peppers, you can see, it has that effect where it gets this low frequency sort of boomy sound. Here's how the microphone handles that. Peter Piper picked a peck of purple pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of purple pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of purple pickled peppers. Now, of course, there's a pop shield that comes with each of these, and you should probably use that if you are going to be up, especially if you're going to be really close on the microphone or talking directly into it like this, Peter Piper. How do they each handle siblings? Let's get a sample of each of those. She sells seashells by the seashore. By the seashore, she sells seashells. She sells seashells by the seashore. By the seashore, she sells seashells. She sells seashells by the seashore. By the seashore, she sells seashells. How do the microphones handle mechanical noise, which is usually bumping the microphone or the stand? They all do come with a shock mount, and they also have internal shock mounting. This is how they do. I'm not here trying to sell these microphones. I'm just, <laughs> the reason I went with the C414 XLS is that I knew that it was a studio classic. These have been in the studios for decades. They're 
staple microphones. It's not a cheap microphone. It's an $1,100 US microphone. Um, but it's a super versatile one and it performs really, really well. And so now AKG has gone back and produced some other microphones very similar to this using many of the same design principles at lower price points. So first up the C214, which comes in at $465 US, and then the C314, which comes in at $815 US. So let's talk about the differences here first. The C214 is based on the sonic character of the C414 XL2. So that is the brighter version. So that, that's the main difference between the C414 XLS, which is supposed to be very linear in terms of frequency response versus the XL2, which definitely has a high frequency boost, as you can see in the frequency response charts here. Now the 214 is supposed to be based on the sonic character of that brighter C414. The C214 has a cardioid polar pattern, which means it's directional. It picks up mostly on the front of the microphone. And then as you, as a sound source moves off to the side and the back of the microphone in particular, it doesn't pick up nearly as much. So that's really good for voiceover. And that is where it differs from the other two microphones, which have switchable polar, polar patterns, where you can choose other polar patterns to use as well, like omnidirectional or figure eight or hypercardioid or wide cardioid. So this doesn't have that functionality, but if you're doing just voiceover, that can be just fine. It does include a minus 20 dB pad, so if you're going to be recording really loud sound sources, again, probably not relevant for voiceover, but if you're going to be recording guitar cabinets or something like that, or drums, that's where that might come in handy. It also has a 160 Hz low cut filter, so it's fixed right there, that's all you get. And the main reason for that is if you're going to work up really, really closely on the mic, having that low cut will allow you to, to, to work up close on the mic to get lots of signal and not a lot of ambient noise pickup, um, but also manage the proximity effects. You don't get that really boomy, wooly kind of sound that you get when you're up really close on a microphone. The equivalent input noise specification on the C214 is 13 decibels A-weighted. That is not unusual for a lot of classic microphones, but it's not nearly as good as the C314 or the 414. So there's a little bit of noise there. It's not a lot, I think it's perfectly usable. It's not until you get up into the 15, 18, where it starts to become a little bit more fiddly and, and problematic, but at 13, you're okay here. The 214 in, comes in a, in a metal carrying case and with a shock mount. So you have everything you need to get started. Now, if you want a pop shield or something like that, you'll need to add that on your own. That's fine. There are lots of those out there and they're not terribly expensive. Interestingly, the marketing description for the 214 is basically saying it is a single capsule version of the XLS, the C414B XLS, and um, cardioid only. So that's, I think, generally true. I think they sound very, very similar based on the samples that we did earlier. And so that may be everything you need for voiceovers. It's a really great microphone at that price point for what you're getting. Now the C314, a little bit different. So just to kind of quote uh, some of the marketing information for this, this is quote, built on the rich heritage of the C414 XLS capsule. So it is voiced very similarly to the C414 XLS, which again, from the samples you could probably tell, you might be able to tell a minor difference, but it's really, really close. It introduces above the T214, it does have a four-way switchable polar pattern. So you can use a cardioid, super cardioid, omnidirectional, or figure eight pickup. And so again, we'll talk about why you might want to use anything other than cardioid in some circumstances. It does have the minus 20 dB pre-attenuation pad. That is to say, you know, just to, if you're going to be recording really loud sound sources, that can be helpful. It's high pass filter is a little bit different. It is at 100 Hertz with a 12 dB per octave slope. So a um, little bit different than the 214. Again, going to be most useful when you're working up really, really close and uh, trying to manage that proximity effect. Another big difference here. So the equivalent input noise specification is 8 dB A-weighted. So much cleaner than the 214. This is where you're getting into the territory where, at least in my work, I'm completely comfortable. I'm not worried about the microphone making a lot of its own self-noise. I just have to worry about the place where I'm recording and managing any noise in that space instead. In the case of the 314, it does come in the same box. So great microphone as well. This one again comes in at $815 US at the time of this video. And I think for those that need 
a little bit more versatility than the 214 and have the additional funds to spend on it, I think the 314 can be a fine choice there. Now, the C414 XLS, let me just read a, a bit from AKG on this to put this all in context. The C414 XLS maintains the sonic character of the legendary C414B ULS, the longest lived C414 model. Engineered for the highest linearity and neutral sound, it is the most universal and versatile large diaphragm microphone released in decades. Again, talking, this is marketing speak here, so. <laughs> um, widely used for accurate, beautifully detailed pickup of any acoustic instrument, the new C414 XLS combines proven reference quality, leading edge technology, and state of the art components. So, again, from, from my point of view, this is a microphone that if you're using it in the context of voiceover, podcasting, live streaming, for me, this would be the choice you would make if you have a, a particularly sibilant voice where the sibilance is just kind of grating on a lot of a lot of other microphones. And that's often the case. I've found that my voice does have a fair bit of a sibilance. And when I use most microphones that have a presence boost between 5 and 10 kilohertz, it's just like, oh, this is too much. And yes, you can use a de but even sometimes if that presence boost is prominent enough, even a de like harmonic distortions have already started occurring. So even if you use a, a de you're still getting that a kind of a different sound to it. So that's where this microphone, or actually this or the 314, I think are especially useful. If you have a darker voice, that's where the XL2, I think, is going to be a better choice for your particular voice. Now, when I say darker voice, I mean not as much of the high frequency energy, not as much sibilance. Um, maybe you have a lot of bass in your voice and not a lot of that high energy stuff or high frequency stuff, I should say. So that's if you need that more ar better articulation and uh, a crisper, higher end crisper sound, that's where the XL2 is probably a better choice when it comes to voiceover. Now, there are other things that are different on the 414 XLS versus the 314. Namely, the self noise specification comes in at 6 dB A weighted, which is really, really, really clean. Um, it does have a high pass filter that's a little bit different. It's switchable between 40 hertz, 80 hertz, and 160 hertz. So you have a good bit more flexibility there. So, for example, if you're using a, if you're recording a men's voice, and this is actually typically what I'm doing, what I'm doing right now, in fact, I have the high pass filter turned on to 40 hertz. I just want to manage any sort of rumble or low frequency stuff in the space here without cutting into my voice. If you have, um, Maybe you're recording a woman's voice that's a little bit higher pitched. That's where you can move it up to 80 or 160. Or if you just really like the kind of less bass response overall, um, you have those options. It's nice because you can dial in exactly the sound you want on the microphone. It also has pads for recording, again, very loud sound sources. Not as relevant, again, in voiceover work, but you can choose between minus 6, minus 12, and minus 18 dB. So really kind of fine-tune it. And that's another thing about these microphones is they're all very good in terms of the their max sound pressure levels that they can handle. That is for recording, again, really, really loud sound sources. So the max SPL spec on actually all three of these, I believe. Let me just double check that. Yeah, it's, it's close. Uh, the 214 is 136 dB SPL, whereas the C414 is 140 dB SPL. And if you're using the pad, the minus 18 pad, you can get all the way up to 158 dB SPL. <laughs> if you're in that space, you need to be using serious ear protection. So these microphones can do a stellar job if you're recording loud sound sources. Now, what about this question of the different polar patterns? Oh, that's another thing. With the 414 XLS, you have, in essence, nine different polar patterns. So it includes cardioid, wide cardioid, hypercardioid, omnidirectional, figure eight, and then spots between those as well. So for example, if I go between cardioid and wide cardioid, I get like a medium wide cardioid. <laughs> and wide cardioid would be useful, for example, if you're the type of person that tends to move around a lot, having a wide cardioid polar pattern will allow you to do that without the sound falling off quite as much, which is, which is nice. The trade-off, of course, is that you're going to pick up potentially a little bit more ambient sound, so you just have to be careful with that. And of course, you can go between wide cardioid and hypercardioid, which basically gets you to super cardioid. <laughs> the, the moral of this whole story here is that you can tune it specifically for the space that you're working in, 
and that's a really useful feature. Now, the figure eight polar pattern can be really useful too if you're doing anything like mid-side recording. That's a stereo form of recording. You can choose how wide of a stereo image you want in post, which is really, really nice. So here's an example. All right, this is the C414 right here. It's in figure eight uh, polar pattern setting and it is picking up sound from the two sides here. And this is the C214 cardioid picking up my voice. So now you'll notice here, this is called a mid-side stereo recording. So if I come over here, of course, we're getting a lot more on the right channel. And then if I come over here, we're getting a lot more on the left channel. So that's a sample of a mid-side stereo recording where this figure eight polar pattern comes in handy. All right, so here's a summary. Um, in short, I would say that if you are looking, if you have a darker voice, not a lot of sibilance, um, and perhaps your voice often sounds muddy through a lot of microphones, that's where the C414 XL2 is probably the best choice for your voice. On the other hand, uh, the 214 could potentially work there as well. It does have a little bit more of a presence boost, a little high frequency bump in its frequency response. If, on the other hand, you have a, a fair bit of sibilance in your voice, that's where I think especially the C414 XLS is going to be a good option, which is the one that I bought. Um, and then the 314 is very close to that as well. Overall, I think these microphones have some of the best shock mount and internal shock mounting, so stand bumps don't tend to create a lot of problems. Like if I just bump this here, as we saw earlier... It manages that better than a lot of other large diaphragm condenser microphones. Uh, the the noise self noise spec is really great on all of the models, especially the XLS and the 314. Um, just overall, a really really great microphone that is super versatile and allows you to do pretty much anything. It's one of those kind of, kind of microphones you buy it once and you use it for the rest of your career, and that's it. <laughs> and that's why so many studios have at least two C414s of either the XLS variety or the XL2 variety. So there's a look at AKG's line of the C214, 314, and 414 XLS. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.